Hi, my name is Paul Stevenson and I'm going to be talking about the mole. Let's think about this problem first. I have a pile of photocopy paper on my desk and I need to know exactly how many sheets of paper are there. How do I do this? The first thing I could do is count each paper individually. However, I don't really want to do this because let's say there are hundreds of pieces of paper. It will take a very long time to count them all and what if I lost count halfway through? I would have to start over. But if I knew the weight of a single piece of paper, then I could weigh the pile, divide by the weight of a single piece of paper, and then I would know exactly how many sheets there were. The people that make photocopy paper have helped us out a bit. They've already divided paper into known quantities. These are known as reams, which have 500 sheets, boxes, which contain 5 reams, and pallets that have 40 boxes. So instead of asking for 100,000 sheets of paper, I can ask for one pallet and then still get the exact amount that I'm after. And this is what the mole is, a word to describe a very, very big number of anything. And by very, very big, I mean absolutely huge. The mole is represented by Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 particles per mole. So this is 6 followed by 23 zeros. That is an absolutely massive number. It's going to be hard for me to give you any type of context for a number this big, but I'm going to try. If we had one mole of marshmallows that were evenly spaced around the earth, this will form a layer 19 kilometers deep. One stack of a mole sheets of paper will reach the moon and back over 80 billion times. And one mole meters is the same as 60 million light years which is 630 times larger than the Milky Way galaxy. The mole is a massive number. Because chemical molecules are so small, the mole is a very useful term for chemists to describe how much of a substance we have. The definition of the mole, according to Blackman, is the amount of substance that contains the same number of specified entities as there are in exactly 12 grams of carbon-12. Let's take a moment to think about this for a bit more. So the atomic mass unit, or the AMU, is defined as one twelfth of the atomic mass of carbon-12. The reason why we use the carbon-12 isomer is because it has six protons and six neutrons in its nucleus, so it has a total of 12 nucleons. So the atomic mass of the carbon-12 isomer divided by 12 is then the atomic mass of one nucleon, which is one AMU. And then to find out how many nucleons are present in one gram of the substance, all we have to do is find the inverse of the AMU, that is 1 over the AMU, and this turns out to be Avogadro's number. The relationship between atomic mass and the number of particles goes a bit further. So the atomic mass of a single atom from the periodic table is equal to the mass of one mole of that substance. So one mole of hydrogen equals one gram because the atomic mass of hydrogen is close to 1 gram. So it's the same for carbon. 1 mole of carbon equals 12 grams, and 1 mole of nitrogen equals 14 grams. And remember that 1 mole of these atoms is 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms. Okay, let's move on to something a bit bigger. So the molar mass of a molecule can be calculated with the chemical formula of that molecule and the atomic mass values from the periodic table. The chemical formula is simply a list of all the atoms present in the molecule and how many there are of each of these types of atoms. So to calculate the atomic mass for a molecule, all you need to do is sum up the masses for each atom that is within that molecule. Let's use caffeine as an example. So if we want to work out the molar mass of caffeine, the first thing we need to do is work out what the chemical formula is for caffeine. So we need to count up how many of each of the different types of atoms are present in the molecule. So if we look closely, we can see that there are a total of eight carbons, 10 hydrogens, four nitrogens, and two oxygens. If we look at the periodic table, then we can see that the atomic mass of carbon is 12.01. If we multiply this by eight, because there are eight carbons in caffeine, then we get 96.08. We continue doing this with the rest of the atoms in the molecule. So we have 10 hydrogens, which contribute 10.08 AMUs to the molecular mass of caffeine. 
we have four nitrogens which contribute 56.04, two oxygens which contribute 32 AMU. The molecular mass of caffeine is the addition of each of the constituent components of this molecule, giving us 194.2 grams per mole. So the molar mass for caffeine is 194.2 grams per mole. So if I had 194.2 grams of caffeine, then I would have one mole of caffeine. And because the mole is just the amount of a substance, you should ask for one mole of caffeine next time you go to get a coffee. It's quite easy to convert between the mass in grams of a substance, the number of moles and its molar mass. All you have to do is follow this triangle. So we've got the mass on the top and the moles and the molar mass on the bottom. You will often be presented with a question that will ask for you to either work out the mass, the moles or the molar mass. So to solve the question, what you do is you cover up the parameter that they're asking you for and multiply across or divide down. So if the question is asking for the mass, you need to work out how many moles of the substance you have and what its molar mass is and then multiply them together. If the question is asking for the number of moles, same, you block out the number of moles, you have to work out what your mass is and you have to work out the molar mass and then the answer is the mass divided by the molar mass. And finally, if the question is asking for the molar mass, well you can either calculate this from the periodic table, but if the question is structured in such a way that you can't do this, then you need to work out what the mass is that you have and how many moles that you have and then your answer is mass divided by moles. Each one of these parameters has its own symbol that is used to represent it. So mass is represented by a lowercase m, moles is represented by a lowercase n, and molar mass is represented by a capital M. So it's very important that you remember what each of these are, and you are able to distinguish them for other symbols that are used in chemistry. It can get very confusing as a lot of these symbols look very similar. So the units that we should use for mass is grams. Now I'll just point out that grams is not the SI unit, but we use grams because this is the scale that chemists often work in. So the unit for moles is mole, which is the SI unit, and the molar mass is moles per gram. Okay, if we look at another example, if I have two grams of table salt, how many moles? Okay, so the question is asking us how many moles. So if we look at the triangle again and we cover up moles, we can see that the mass and the molar mass are left. So the number of moles equals the mass divided by the molar mass. From the question, we can see that we know what the mass is, and that's 2 grams. So all we have to do now is work out the molar mass for table salt. Table salt is made up of sodium chloride crystals. We can work out the molecular mass of this because we know from the periodic table that the atomic mass of sodium is 23 grams per mole and the atomic mass of chlorine is 35.45 grams per mole. So when we add these together, we get the molecular mass of salt, which is 58.45 grams per mole. Now we have everything we need to solve this problem. So the moles equals the mass divided by the molar mass. So the moles is 2 grams divided by 58.45 grams per mole. So the units cancel out and the number of moles we have is 0 0.3422. Because the mole is an amount, we can use it to work out how many particles are present. So we do this by using Avogadro's number, which we multiply the number of moles that there are, which gives the total number of particles. For example, one mole of carbon is 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms, and atoms is a type of particle. 2 moles of carbon is 12.044 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms. And the relationship between the number of moles and the number of particles increases in this way. So if we extend our previous example, and now we're asked how many molecules there are of NaCl in 2 grams of table salt, all we have to do is multiply the number of moles we have, which we know from example 2, by Avogadro's number, which will give us 2.061 times 10 to the power of 23 molecules of sodium chloride. To finish up, we'll look at a bit more of a complicated question. So example 4, which has the greatest number of particles? 
3.011 times 10 to the power of 23 N2 molecules or 14.01 grams of nitrogen molecules. So to solve this question, the first thing we need to do is convert both numbers into the same units. We'll do this by finding how many molecules there are of N2 in 14.01 grams of nitrogen. So N2 is made up of two nitrogen atoms stuck together. So if we work out the atomic mass of nitrogen from the periodic table, we'll find out that the atomic mass of N2 is 2 times 14.01 grams per mole, which is 28.02 grams per mole. So if we want to work out how many moles of nitrogen there are, we look at the triangle again, cover up moles and divide down. So we have moles equals mass over molar mass, which is 14.01 divided by 28.02. So when we do this calculation, we find out that we have 0 0.5 moles. So how many molecules are there of nitrogen in 0 0.5 moles? So we do this by multiplying our number of moles by Avogadro's number. So we multiply 0 0.5 by 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23, which gives us 3.011 times 10 to the power of 23 particles in 14.01 grams of N2 molecules. So the answer to this question is that they both have the same number of particles. So that is the end of this video on the mole. If you liked it and you learned something, hit the like button. And if you have any comments or suggestions about things I can talk about in the future, please leave a comment below.